here. I'm going and to... I, I feel like I should... So we're recording it right now. Welcome to Real Liberty Media. This is uh, Ponder Gander, back uh, for more of uh, What Matters. I'm your host, Vincent Easley. And today, I have a guest. Uh, I've not connected voices in some time, other than with uh, me and Flash and the crew here at Real Liberty Media. But today, uh, I've titled this, Life and Death. Blur, yeah, okay, apparently blur. we're going to argue about dead babies now, right? Well, no, 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 that'll that'll come. Oh, I thank you, Grimner. I forgot to put show no or now. No, this is going to involve in uh, in all kinds of directions, in in places that people won't be comfortable with. So, okay, um, it's where I'm most comfortable. Good. Well, I'll give you the title and I'll give us the intro and uh, then introduce you. And say how you, I say Chascura, and so obviously I'm not. <laughs> well, when I think of it myself, I always think like Chascura, but like I'd, it, it's, it's one of those, like, it's such a stupid made up name that there can't be a wrong way to say it. I like my way better. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it sounds more foreignese to me, but eh, whichever. Chascura. We'll, we'll work on it. <laughs> like I'm from Honduras. Are you really? You're, you're no, I'm not. I'm oh. just saying it sounds like it when oh, you say okay. it that way. I was going to say, you don't even have an accent, dude. What? <laughs> I mean, I, I have an American accent, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, mine's uh, Southern Fried Slash. But anyways, let me give us an introduction here, right here at Real Liberty Media. This is uh, another Ponder Gander. And uh, back to connecting some voices and having some discussion. And, and get uncomfortable, maybe, with some... Um, we're going to get into the discussion of abortion and where where the parameters are and uh, kind of take uh, some some look philosophically and otherwise uh, at where that is. So today and we're allowed to Google in the middle of this and make sure that we're on base with what the facts are, right? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just going to defer to you to bring some facts and in, uh, in points to discuss. Okay, I'm just going to defer to Google because I'm just some random asshole on the Internet. Fine. And I just I want to make that absolutely clear. Like, I have no standing, I have no degrees, I have nothing. Like, I've, I've done some interesting things, let's put it that way, but I'm not an expert. Don't yeah. don't take this as an expert, just take this as if you have an argument against abortion, you should be able to beat that argument with me. Well, I took a look at some links uh, that you provided, just uh, glanced over them, but uh, in... Not wanting to come like I've uh, been studying for something. I just want to go on where I've been and where I'm at, and then build from there. And we'll we'll explore and look at the the information that uh, that comes comes out. So I have some links up that we can look at as well, and you can uh, definitely pull in some out. But I really, okay. here we go. This is uh, blurred and bloody, in black and white. So I've been running of in black and white. This is the last one of the in black and white series. And I thought it only fitting it be blurred and bloody. I thought it was a real good ending. So I say now, uh, you are what you do, not what you say you'll do. That comes from uh, Cowboy Quotes, and I used to have a link to it in there, but uh, it, it was a broken link, so and I couldn't find it. So now it's mine, the paraphrase plagiarist rides again. Be the media! Take <laughs> your future Something journal. like that. Uh, yes, truth. Needs defense, and you can only be found, uh, obviously, by looking, taking a ponder gander in, in, in discussion. So be the media. I'm Vinny online, right here at Real Liberty Media. Find the support link there for uh, especially our uh, dedicated, long time uh, freakers right here at Real Liberty Media. Well, this is Friday, the 20th of September, 2019. If you're listening downstream, you can come back and find it through uh, the RLM. There's a lot of pages over there. You'll find it. It'll be where you're listening, no doubt. And what matters to Ponder Gander. Join the journey, and uh, I got a play button right there to explore more in this radio writing series. So I'm taking it in. Uh, maximum. <laughs> I thought this was clever to take it in here. Max, max, if I can even say it, maximum of... <laughs> Yeah, I'm so clever. Maximum level of compose. Now, the best I can come up with there, other than where I found it in reference, is uh, you might consider what a plumber would know, other than not biting their fingernails and paydays on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Good starting point for a plumber. Yeah. Blurred lines laid down low. 
Yes, things exist because they have recently come into existence or because they have qualities that make them unlikely to be destroyed in the past. So they are, or they will be, they have potential. Uh, Richard Dawkins says this in The Blind Watchmaker, why the evidence of evolution reveals a universe without design. I find it hard to fathom design without a designer is my well position. i mean to be fair you should be reading his quotes from his books and not from creationist attempts at rebuttals of his books i i believe that uh was this not uh uh i think this was from him actually himself that said it no it, it, it sounds like an accurate quote but yeah. it sounds like the kind of quote that gets cherry-picked by the people that want to find reasons for him to be wrong oh no well uh i i can't say that i find anything wrong in that point right there that's a very scientific uh observation and statement I'd say that, that kind of exists the parameters of uh, life as we know it yeah so it's I, I mean this is a conversation that it's I find easy to be the asshole in because I'm uh, I'm kind of uh, I'm a former Christian and now the annoying kind of atheist if this conversation comes up and it, it will it will and that's fine yeah. but that'll be later, okay. later later down the line and certainly we can We'll be interjecting our, uh, what I call notions or ideas, beliefs, okay. things like that. I mean, Yeah, we've talked we about are. that philosophical rejection of belief thing, haven't we? No, uh, not specifically, and we, we can cover okay. that. Okay, because I you, kind of have that. this like deliberate philosophical rejection of belief. Like, it's one of the, like, I'm not denying that it's a thing so much as I think it's like poor mental hygiene. It's like walking around with shit in your pants kind of thing. It's, it, if you have something important enough to believe, you should know it. And if you can't know it, you shouldn't pretend it's true without the absence of something compelling to make you think it's true. Certainly. I absolutely agree. Um, too, too many times, you know, people use um, their their faith or whatever, religion, and um, without question. And uh, obviously, I, I think uh, everything needs question, especially beliefs. I, like I, I said, I was calling them notions, whatever, ideas. I mean, you, you, your yeah. health, your, yourself, you're going to have uh, whatever word you want to use to describe it. Ideas, uh, notions. I mean, notion is probably the best because that's basically all it is. It's your brain holds thoughts, and pretending the thought is the real version of the thing that's outside your head is just kind of counterproductive. Eventually, there's going to be some disconnect between what you know and what you don't know and the I mean, it just causes problems down the line. So just, like, I think the best thing to do is just accept that, yes, you probably understand some things about what a phenomena is that you're talking about, but you can't know everything about it by definition. So but, there's just going to be gaps in your knowledge. Yes, supposition is uh, uh, an uncertain belief. Well, that, uh, that ties that right there. I mean, that's what we're going to have, right? We're going to have... Uh can't yeah, and so like bringing that back to the abortion thing, that's why I think it's kind of problematic to say that I believe this is murder of a baby. Because mm -hmm. it's, it, I mean, it's this is a not black and white issue. It's it's a very difficult because if you're a potential mother and you don't want to have a kid, why are you going to bring any pregnancy to, to any kind of term where it's going to like have a baby that results? It, it, I mean, it's just one. You want to prevent it. You don't want to have any part of it. And so, like to call it murder, when what's being extracted, if anything, is usually a lump of goo, it's just like it's just a misuse of the term murder. It just it doesn't apply here because there's not an actual victim. It's like spitting. Is the spit a murder because you have viable cells in your saliva that could be cloned and turned into a person? No. Right. Well, I will. Am I an asshole for thinking that way? You uh, certainly believe as you, or think as you will, and that's where we're going to come down the line. And uh, obviously, we're not going to to agree on uh, all the things. <laughs> well, I mean, but, do we uh, agree on this part at least? Well, I will say uh, that uh, life begins when when the uh, culmination comes together. I mean, it's not. Uh, so the life begins at conception thing. I, I'm going with conception. Yeah, I'm going to take. So is the conceived thing. organism a viable, independent organism? No, but neither is a one-year-old baby. Well, at what point is a human a viable, independent thing? 
well, some people might uh, question that, and some people they know. Do they ever grow up and become? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, what's that? What's that parenting quote that is just the first forty years of it that are hard? Yeah. So there, there you go. There. I mean, uh, what do you do? Uh, post postnatal abortion at uh, twenty one? Yeah. What, what was it? The, the South Park episode where Cartman's mom wanted to have a forty second trimester abortion. I don't see it. You don't. It, oh man, that was back in the day. But yeah, it, she wanted to have a forty second trimester when her son was eight. Abortion, and then she got all the way to at the time Bill Clinton's White House, and then somebody corrected her and said adoption, not abortion. Oh, uh, what was that? South Park, you said? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, one of the earlier seasons. I don't remember which. I, it's uh, been too long since I watched it. I went many, many years with never watching the episode of South Park until. Uh, Oh, it's been over a decade ago now, I guess. But the first one I saw was uh, uh, on the Mormon, uh, the one about. Mormon. Oh yeah, that's a classic. That's a really good episode. Uh, I, I remember that one. Dum 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 dum. dum. I, I think uh, religion is uh, is personal, and as long as uh, a person can can demonstrate what it is they're supposed to uh, uphold in their uh, ideology, then it's certainly fine. Yeah. But when it comes to um, force of will or um, told what to and what can't to, uh, you know, be done. I don't know. I, th I think if we have a basic standard of, like, you, your religion shouldn't be an excuse for you to murder people. Like, right. the, the basic standards of rule of law and justice type stuff. Like, that's not unreasonable, is it? Not at all, No. And we, yeah, so we, we like, find uh, double We standards. know instinctively that the religion should not be above reproach and that it should be held with checks and balances just like all humans are, right? Yeah, and um, even even more so, I'd say, even to higher standards of accountability, religion and, and uh, people... You know, well, can you meet those higher standards? I think that they ought to be... Uh, stand the test of, of uh, you know... Putting it to the test to to say you know what are you what what does your ideology represent what do you do I mean what are your works um, it does does your uh, even you got to even take it down to the ideology in the heart does uh, does your belief of that religion uh, promote killing do you, do you use it as a prop for to for war. And, and you know, there's there's re godless religions too. And don't think that there's not. That, uh, oh yeah, if you look at the Soviet system, they basically set themselves up like a giant Catholic church, but then they also had to play the role of both God right. and devil. Or look at North Korea now; it's kind of the same. Like, do you realize that Kim Jong Un's mythology is that he was born of, a, or no, Kim Jong Il, the guy before him, like the the second of the three glorious leaders thus far. Was he was apparently born of a virgin, and like all of the birds took flight in North Korea and flew around to signify it type thing. I mean, is this on your radar? No, I didn't know, but I'm not surprised. Okay. I mean, we can Google this and verify. Yeah. Like here, I've got the chat up. Let me and pull up. What are we at? Somewhere around the 12th or 14th Dalai Lama. I think actually I have a link over here that uh, I had intended to pull a part out of. Ten myths that are facts in North Korea. Kim Jong Il invented the. Uh, I mean, this is from September 2015. I mean, we, you want to go through this? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, in, uh, uh, let me. I'm this is one of those dumb pop culture top ten lists, apparently from India. One, Kim Jong Il had a supernatural birth. Move over, Jesus. Based on Kim Jong Il's official biography, he was born on North Korea's most sacred mount. Uh, Mount Baekdu. At the moment of his birth, a new star formed and illuminated the sky. The season suddenly changed from winter to spring, and a double rainbow appeared. I mean, yeah, it's it, number two. Kim Jong Il is a fashion icon. Three, the world loved Kim Jong Il. Four, Kim Jong Il invented the hamburger. Master golfer never used a toilet. Um. <laughs> Yeah, quite the guy. Yeah, it's 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 quite interesting when you see stuff like this happening now today with people that are like you and me that you know if they escaped North Korea, if they went to South Korea, they spend a year or two recovering, eating hamburgers, getting their strength back, type of thing. You know they wouldn't think this way. 
Yeah, I can't imagine. But people do believe uh, the strangest of things, don't they? Let me. Uh, well, I mean, I think the same applies to basically all of the world's religions. They, they they basically all agree about that about each other. They can't all be right. Well, no, certainly not. But you can be right partially in places. All right. Oh yeah. You don't have to be. Yeah, com- com- the, the problem is that they set up false premises for understanding what you are and what your place is in the universe that give you a, a giant tactical disadvantage for dealing with reality. So it's just one of those, like, I. As much as I want to say live and let live and just let people do what they want, there are real problems with it that need to be addressed. Like, how many pedophiles are hidden by the Catholic diocese? That's a, there's a real number there that nobody knows, and that's a problem. That's a very big problem, and way past uh, overdue of being exposed. There's a, there's a, a break-off that I recently uh, found about, uh, well, 2017 anyways, but they're uh, uh, called Traditional Catholics, and they have the Pope as the Antichrist in uh, ab- absentia, I think is the, uh, the word for it. I found it. Uh, uh, yeah, he's uh, the seat is empty. In other words, so they're not they they've broken off from the Catholic Church, the main one. They don't uh, recognize him. They they say that he's the Antichrist. But there's so many. Uh, I mean, you know, interpretations of all this and that. So I mean, we'd be running uh, in big circles trying to run all that down. But no, well, the, the thing is, you can run it to a complete circle. You can yeah, that's right. reasonably figure out what there is to a mythology and what the basis of it is and figure out whether or not that specific God is real. So it's like, I mean, I have this tagline that you'll see me throw around a lot, like whether or not there's a God, it's not from Christian mythology. Like, we, that ship has sailed. You can do the research. It's one You might not be psychologically able to admit that kind of thing to yourself because you might have, you know, all sorts of normal, natural reasons to be loyal to that as, like, the way that you still connect with your grandmother who's passed on and you hope to see her in the afterlife type of thing. Like, those are reasons. They're valid reasons for it being a religious person. But they're just not reasons that have anything to do with the factual nature of it. Yeah, they're uh, called the comfort doctrines, I I would say. So uh, you won't find me uh, bound in any um, constraints of any church as far as uh, religiosity. Uh, I, I believe in free will, and uh, I, in fact, believe that that we uh, we are judging God ourselves, that uh, in who He is, and whether He be right or wrong, and that's where we sit in with ourselves is uh, to to find that right and wrong. Let me go over here. Somebody, I was gathering some stuff here. Uh, hello, in chat. And this other one's flashing. Sorry, I'm very distractible at flashing lights. Who's saying here what? The guest is too loud. I'm always too uh, loud. Yeah? Am I too low? I said I have my mic down a little bit. Which I just uh, turned the gain down on mine a little bit. Is that any better, guys? Well, we'll see as it comes down. It'll take a minute or so. Well, I'm down at 34. Maybe I'll come up and see if I can... I usually run at 50, but that's kind of loud. Yeah, Grim says he expected to be loud and fuzzy. All right, let's see. Let me go back where I was at. I, uh, that I, okay, I was capturing a link over here, you know, putting it, I'm adding it as I go along. But I, I'll have to come back and do that. Here, let me read this. This is from the uh, 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet. So I came across this, and I think, uh, It was shared out of the, uh, it might have been Anti that shared it into the chat. But anyways, I've been having this held out here for a while to to bring to air. And it says, it's really the real pictures, the the real picture we need to see in front of us. Just because five minutes after your birth, they decide your name, nationality, religion, and sect. And you spend the rest of your life defending something you didn't even choose. It doesn't make you a religious, a religion judge. Nobody can solve the issue, and certainly not prayers. We need to solve the problems, as the Dalai Lama states. We are asking God to solve it. It is illogical. God would say, solve it yourself, because you created it in the first place. Well, 
I find a lot to agree in that. And in an effect, I don't know. It uh, looks kind of like he's the victim of his culture in that because it's like I definitely did not stay my parents' religion the whole time growing up. No, I, I've uh, explored a lot of different religions in it, from uh, Islam and, and Buddhism and um, the many different types of uh, Christianity, um, spiritualism and whatnot, and having a, a look-see at, at uh, all of it in, in journey, taking a look. You know, and what the, the common thing to find is, is uh, the what's the right part in it. I mean, I think we all have a voice inside to uh, tell us what's right. You know, this is a 420 of Vine time. I have to post over here to the chat. And uh, we're going to have celebratory uh, weed time. Hang on. Are you taking a break and smoking weed? Not yet, but I'm typing it in to the chat over here. Because it's, four, <laughs> it's 420. Well, you don't get to take one of those breaks without me. Uh, it's 420 somewhere. And I might be late. Let's see if I am. Can I, oh, can I get it in? Can I get it in before it passes? I did. 420 somewhere. And we have bots to uh, help us out here. And Smart As fires up the bubbler and passes it around. And we've got uh, Bahia Blackhead Bud from Barman. Thank you, thank you. Well, I'm going to light up. I'm going to step away and grab my vape pen real quick because that's the kind of thing I can have in here. All right. I'll be right back. All right. Now, back to retail. I'll, I'll clip that link over there and add it in. So here I am, and I'll come down where I'm at in the radio log. And this, uh, this goes back to uh, Hal Anthony in uh, response to his broadcast a couple weeks ago. Uh, back, and so I still have ad, uh, links to add there to, to bring that together. Uh, he responded to me in saying, apparently principle and responsibility are not popular where breads and circuses are made readily available to create the social equivalence of a uh, I think he broke it. Uh, a labyrinth junk lady that uh, Hashtag Labyrinth Junk Lady. So that's behind the woodshed. And I want to come down. Hey, I'm in the wrong spot. Let me go over here before I got it open and not an edit. Uh, and scroll back down. Here I am. Okay, so. Man, I played with this for so long and changed it a hundred times and I still don't like it. Okay, so I respond to uh, Hal. He's here Sundays at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern behind the woodshed. That's loud. What you going to do with all that junk in the trunk, I said. And in re response to that, I took all his words and broke them apart. Give example. And uh, laid out some type of notion I might have of what it is I'm looking at. So responsibilities, busyness, rouse the bee's buzz. The toll, the toll and gain of life. The to I'm sorry. The toil and gain of life's daily bread. So bread and circuses is in there, so that's put together, bread, and then circuses rouse crowds to glee, the pain drawn frown, the responsibility to suffer, as the sad face of a clown, is just in only ordinary and everyday businesses principle. Obtain the need, that's the bread, the circuses is the creed, the disdain. Want and ruin made to create societal acceptance and we all listen here live at least know about the uh, how that comes to be obtain the obtain the need the breads and the circuses the creed now a maze so we're talking about the uh, the labyrinth and there's the maze and I have it to be meant as or a maze meant a ruse a muse meant a ruse Arouse meant a reaction. So popular apparent principle and responsibility available equivalence is what was found. Is a wander in a, in a wander land, I say. And from from Ocean Man, he says, uh, take, me to, take me by the hand and lead me to the land that you understand. I'm trying to figure it out. It's a lost lingo, and I have here... Uh, like I said, dude, you have a future as a Canadian rapper. 
a Canadian rapper. <laughs> I don't know if I should feel uh, complimented or not. <laughs> We got we got a couple of Canadians here. They ain't bad. I like old Frumpy. I believe he'd make a fine American. Sure would like to get him down here one day and keep him. <laughs> but here, here I have yeah, different this, Americans, uh, the immigrants. Oh yeah, well them too. Uh, I'm talking about no. I mean, they, he started in Canada and he came here. He'd be an immigrant even if he was white. No, we'll we'll uh, we'll give him a pass and let him straight on in as American. Hang on, you don't give a pass say, to the not white ones? Yeah, I do that too. Absolutely. I, yeah, I can tell you many stories of, uh, in Mexico and out and living and partying and friends at, uh, from all parts of the world. Uh, started out and uh, really getting a taste of uh, the difference uh, that come about in the world in uh, Southern California and starting in the mid, mid-80s. So that was... Uh, I, I really liked it. I got to, to learn a lot and un- come to understand. But I have here from a few years ago, Circle, uh, our very own, made this for me. And as uh, I took words together, and she made uh, a big, long picture. And it's so cool. It's a lost lingo. It's uh, words and communication. It's emojis. Emojis have become a favorite rhetorical weapon. And this bleeds over, so I'm going to be having a hard... Oh, let me just blow it up so I can really see it for sure. Hold on, and I'll see what uh, somebody's saying. I already got it blowed up to 125. All right, here it is. Let me try it again. Emojis have become a favorite rhetorical weapon of choice, <clears throat> claimed by some as a sign of how how the culture has degraded. Say what you will about not being a proper language but I like it by words or weird faces in type or strange places has language lost its luster what do we know or think we know what's being said and how can we say it we might be saying the same words but till we speak the same language it's on and on and some more and I want to go down to the very end of where from Jack Homo from Devo, he says, "Are we not men? They tell us we've lost our tails, evolving up from little snails." So there we are, in between the twixt and the twain of where we're at and where we're going. Can't be nowhere else but where we're at. Uh, did you get all figured out over there? Chascura. Yeah, I'm all set, dude. Good. I've been over here vaping the whole time. I've been listening to your poetry. <laughs> and also, I've got the point to add that, I mean, some of my linguist friends count emojis as an actual discrete language apart from other things. Because it's one of those, like, if you speak Italian and your friend speaks Spanish, you can kind of right. half-ass it to each other. But if uh-huh. you're, like, you're speaking Thai and your friend speaks Russian, you can get emojis across and still have a means of communication. I agree. Yeah, I think uh, the language has evolved and uh, you, you, you go along. You know, I mean, even the English language is... We wouldn't even understand it uh, so many years ago. I'll come I mean, back it, it goes to... back further than you'd think. It's if Shakespeare spoke English with his own accent today, like there there are recreations of that kind of accent and that kind of English, and it's it it basically sounds Australian to me. Oops. Okay, I think I'm back there. I right, killed my mic. With, yeah, there's uh, so many different variations and. In the English, I, I like to call not what I speak English, but American, in that uh, Southern in style. American English. American, yeah. There you go. Well, listen. Let's go in and uh, let's let's get bloody a little bit. Let's. I've got some links over here. Let me pick out one. Here's uh, questions and answers on late uh, term abortion. These were uh, some links that you shared with me. They'll be in the blog from uh, Charlotte. I, sure if I shared any specific links. I don't have like a giant roster of these links, but what happens is I I get into these conversations often enough that I'm very used to Googling Mm -hmm. and finding something similar to what I found the last couple times. Mm -hmm. So like the late term abortion is a a really easy example for people to get angry at. And almost nobody does the due diligence and figures out that that's not a contraceptive thing. It's only ever used for medical emergencies. And it's only an issue because of religious motivations to ban abortion. Why? Uh, why is the baby being uh, 
killed as it comes out of the wound in the the latest uh, of term abortion? As so late medical? term abortion refers to second and third trimester abortion. Most normal, like contraceptive abortion, where you're trying to not get pregnant and you didn't want to get pregnant in the first place, and you're not trying for a baby and you just want this out of you. That happens either immediately with a pill or at about seven weeks with whatever kind of surgery they need. So that's like there's not something that's really a coherently human thing to get murdered at that point. What happens later on is either it's like an ectopic pregnancy where the baby is a normal baby, but instead of implanting inside the uterus, it implants in the fallopian tube. That will rupture the fallopian tube and kill the mother. Yeah, like that's tubal, just not an option. So pregnancy. that that baby has to come out or the mom dies. Yes, that happens. There's there's medical times that uh, there's there has to be a choice. Yeah, it and is. so like that's a category of medical choice that exists, and it's not up to religious idiots to question competent doctors trying to save lives. They're not trying to end the baby's life. They're trying to save the mother. I'm over here typing. I'm trying to find the the uh, procedure. Yeah, no. I mean, Describe. if I'm wrong on this, find me an example of a contraceptive late-term abortion. Find me a single one. They're just not out there as a category. The kind of person you have to be in order to do that kind of thing to a baby that you have carried for six months is just like you're, you're a sociopath at that point, and you're not going to get pregnant and keep it to that point in the first place if that's the kind of person you are. And even if that kind of person wanted to have an abortion, isn't it better for them to? Well, I don't know that uh, that's uh, the first answer, certainly. Uh, I would say not the first answer, certainly. Of no, of course. Because they like, don't you want don't a baby. You don't just casually murder a baby. Yeah, they mean, there, there's, uh, unfortunately, the way the world is, and um, that all comes from choice, people, uh, you know, fall in to, to the crags, and, you know, babies... Or in mothers that are, are on drugs and whatnot, and you know, that when they get caught, when they go to have the baby, then you know, then they've got to either uh, do or die or give up the child. So yeah, and what percentage of people that have been on crack or heroin that you've met or that you've heard of have been able to just kick it and go cold turkey? Me? Yeah. Have you met people like this? I've met heroin addicts. I've met people that have quit and oh, successfully stayed off it for years. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was uh, a professional drug user for a portion of my life, and I've known known many. I had a really good friend, like a brother, uh, Frankie. He's uh, man, alcohol was his downfall. He'd get on that, and you know what? They he he gets you know all straightened out in life. What what a run of luck! This guy come in to uh, a couple million dollars, and what did he do? I mean, it was uh, uh, it was too much for him. Did he drink at all? Well, he he was uh, five years sober, I believe it was, or, or it might have been just uh, over, and yeah. fell off. Boom! And what did he do? Well, he's going to the doctor, and you know, not uh, doing the street drugs. He's getting uh, pills from the doctor, which are okay, quicker than any anything on the yeah. street. Yeah. Uh, so I I wasn't there, but I I I see it played in my mind. Uh, and he was there feeling sorry for himself, and started eating pill after pill, and. Uh, there he went. Yeah, that's a pretty common pattern. It's pretty, I mean, it's a damn shame, dude. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I, I've seen it. Um, but yeah, me and him uh, ran the streets together, had the own uh, portion in the game. But uh, partial, uh, this is, I've got a link here. In, so I went to National Right to Life, which uh, I've, the other one I saw was uh, NPR, so I'd put those two in contrast. Uh, I'll start here. And what is partial birth abortion? It's uh, the procedure where the, they pull out a living baby feet first out of the womb and into the birth canal, uh, except for the head, which the, uh, they purposely keep lodged just inside the cervix. Um, then that punctures the base of the baby's skull. Yeah, it's basically trying to end any experience of any nervous system that is there. So the baby doesn't suffer if it can. Yes, and uh, I, I know there's other ones where they go in there and suck the baby out. And they, well, I, I, the, the sucking the baby out thing, they're, what they're actually doing is they're trying to scrape out the inside of the womb itself. Yeah. Because there's a lining that gets formed, and that's actually what gets ejected every month with the, the menstrual cycle. Uh -huh. 
So that stuff, that, that lining has to come out and, I mean, in the old days, they would basically stick a vacuum cleaner up there and pull that all out because that's how you would also pull out the pregnancy because yeah. it's, it's something that's so small that you can't it actually is. find it. It's, yeah, it's a, it is a, a form where they go in there in either with the vacuum and also with the four snips, and they go in there and they break the little baby apart up inside. But I house. also have to add the footnote. But, this is kind of uh, old school. This is like yeah. what they would have done in the 30s. Okay. This is not like modern conventional abortion <laughs> stuff. This is like if you are far enough along and you just like didn't know it was available and you're having the latest possible abortion maybe something like that would happen but almost all of i mean first what you have to understand in in the first place is how difficult it is for humans to get pregnant and how easy it is for humans to have miscarriages so if you want to talk about abortions we have to talk about like i I forget what the number it's something it's just mind-boggling we should google it but it's uh the normal rate of miscarriage where the it gets fertilized by the sperm and it goes down and it's in the cervix or in the uterus and the body's just ejects it like a normal menstrual cycle anyway that's a lot of pregnancies and that's yeah. why most women won't announce when they first get pregnant because they're waiting to see if it actually takes right all right i gotta so like down if we're here. going to talk about saving the babies for god we have to talk about how many babies god is killing well uh I'll, i can come back into that point but no, I would go back to say that we uh, are all agents of free will, and um, God. Well, how much God, free will? How God, free is it? To do as you will, for good or bad. Well, how much? Can, like, can I choose to fly and fly? Well, it's that's, limited. That's we can't not, do that, right? That's not. Yeah, you're. you're I can't expected, even choose yeah. to not like thick butts. Yeah, well, I mean, we're we're going to keep it real here. I mean, uh, you have the right to do it within your ability whatever you will, whether it be good or bad. Whether you choose to do harm or to do good, all right. To the extent that you don't infringe on anybody else's that's attempts or abilities to do that for themselves, and that's when it becomes a wrong. So yeah, I, when it I, robs them of the decision, or it takes away their health, or their perceived assessment of how their life is going, their happiness, for lack of a better word. Well, I, I'll come into that there. Well, let me just go ahead and do it now. So at this point, I mean, there is uh, what you would call. Um, um, where you come in to stand in the gap in a sense that if uh, somebody is not does not have the ability uh, to defend themselves, then uh, should not one come to uh, stand in defense of that person? As uh, for example, myself in in Bunkerville in, in 2014 at the Bundy Ranch standoff, where um, a couple of hundred uh, federal agents came armed and you know ready to kill these people and and hundreds. And hundreds that day, and over the over the weeks, uh, thousands of people came in support, it, and it really changed uh, the course of history. I think in the West, at least, it's postponed it. Now, I was a witness uh, it, during the federal trial. It started in 2017. It'd be a couple of years ago here coming up uh, this next month. But uh, and again, we went there to to report, and and so that's what I. Can kind of do here is just you know make a record and stand in uh, give an account and I and I think we all uh, should have you know stand to account because in our actions if we do wrong then we need to answer to that um, against uh, you know by the wrong person then we get over into this uh, other area where um, people take uh, positional authority they um, they reign from seats of decision and and uh, positions of power that uh, they they do not keep and maintain the uh, no harm you know interaction there stopping they they actually bring about harm and, and I could cite many cases on that of government interference <clears throat> but what is what is peace and uh, where does it come from well it, it's a peace of settlement and that that's uh that's found in law so law Law is uh, is needed, and actually, uh, is it right here in front of me? I have uh, to that uh, to add in about the law. It's, where's it at? Down to the bottom. Yes. If law is laid waste and order destroyed, no poor man can survive when he is robbed. Justice does not address him. So that that in from uh, Miriam uh, Lech. Lectime, 
It's from uh, Ancient Egyptian Literature, Volume 1, The Old and uh, Middle Kingdoms. Well, while I'm there, I'll go ahead and finish out this other uh, set of uh, words laid out. Laid down, I say at the end, laid laid down low. And I say, ticks and tocks, bits and fits of last little knocks come. Big timely hits. Born in time, you better hurry. Thinking of gifts. <clears throat> Thinking of gifts. Not giving away. Looks good together. Don't close your eyes. Time is short. Corked in a bottle. The good and bad, timely in manner. Life unafraid. Escape alarm and confusion. Minute by minute, you're almost there. Give a suit in a timeless manner. Awaken in time to look in the mirror. Concerned in, concerned in measures, watching its cries. Going for broke, inheritance gambled. Lost choices in the cost more than the dollars. Meantime of Greenwich. That's what time that was set in. The meantime of Grimmage to take off on the green green I can't say it can I Greenwich uh, meantime yeah that but hey, let me say it again meantime of Greenwich Grimmage Grimner <laughs> it's sound toned and it's laid down low oh, well that sounds terrible maybe uh, it didn't as good as it uh, looked to be but anyway it sits there in black and white Laid down to go. Now, where, where, where? I left you off at. Um, Just go to something before another Canadian rep. <laughs> uh, yeah. See, I see okay, we circumcision were... has come up in the chat. Uh -huh. yeah, uh, that's that's one of those dumb ladies, too, who's like, hey, we're made in the perfect image of God, but let's just snip the tip off her dick, right? Yeah, just uh, traditions, aren't they? Or, I mean, other parts, depending on what kind of circumcision we're talking about. But at least, like, if you look at some of the really ugly history that's out there, like, the way that, I mean, there are still some farming traditions now where the farmer will take the animal's eyes out so it can't wander away from them. Wow. Like, that stuff exists. Like, it could be a lot worse than it is. At least they're just doing the tip and not, like, half of it. I'm going to hit this just in case it ain't. There's the title. I'm going to put it back in. I think I thought, uh, yeah, Grimner did post it. Thanks, Grimner. Double sure. And, yeah, uh, it paid in dividends. It paid in dividends. Now, I want to go back to, because uh, it's too easy to get over here to, to split hairs. Now, the majority of abortions are done as, uh, uh, what, post-conception, uh, pre, um, yeah. Yeah, what we call, um... Oh, shit. Contraceptive is yeah, the word. Yeah. Post-contraception? Oh, no, no, no. Contraceptive. So, post-conception. So, after the act of conception where the sperm fertilizes the eggs has happened, and you have something to actually, like, get out of your body before it turns into a baby, that's, it, I mean, that's the morning after pill, the RU486 or whatever it is that everybody's heard of these days. Yeah, so it's it, basically people not being responsible in their um, reproduction. I mean, it's, it's kind of people not being responsible if they decide they don't want a baby but don't take the pill, isn't it? Well, there's into splitting hairs because it's never the same answer. No, hang on. It's one of those, like, it's it's not a crime to take a pill and basically eject a little bit of phlegm in an early period, right? Well, I, I'm not going to say that what's legal is... Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I'm not go. talking about what's legal either. Let's talk about what's right and wrong. So is there a victim here? Yeah, the baby. What baby? The baby that's in the belly. What baby is in the belly? The baby that's growing. That's private to me. The baby that's in there growing. I won't give At, you medical. No, no, no. How long, how far along are we? Yeah, we, we are. Day we're, after, right is it a baby? We're, we're, let's, uh. We can't go down this road and come out as in agreement. So, I mean, we are really running well, this I, into I mean, circle. Let's, if I'm wrong, I'll change my mind. How's that? Uh, I'm not here to prove anything to you. I'm here to, in, in discussion. If there is something to prove, prove it. I'm not here to prove nothing. I'm here to well, have discussion. I mean, let's look at this, though. No. 
Well, look, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying I'm not to gonna, say that I, you're wrong about anything, I, but there, look at I can this. tell you that uh, a little bitty baby, no no bigger than a peanut, it looks like a little tiny little bitty baby in there. I can't tell you how old. So it looks yeah. like it makes it a full human. Well, yeah, and growing. Like I said, a baby born, you know, that when are they able to take care of themselves? Where, you know, say a, uh, a colt hits the ground and uh, you know, just in no time it's up on its legs and around it. Yeah. And, where does all yeah, this come so from? the natural condition of the cult but, is that but, it doesn't start running; it gets eaten by the wolf, right? Yeah, and the and he's not going to, um, you know, survive without the milk. He doesn't go to eating grass, right? You know, We're also we mammals; babies. we also eat milk, right? Yeah, we uh, all flesh is grass is uh, part of uh, my well, broadcast. Last, is a baby uh, the size of a peanut able to take in milk? Well, it takes in nutrients from the mother. It just moves. No, 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 no. That no, wasn't no, the no. question. Yes, listen. It is taking in the nutrients from the mother. It's fed to the umbilical, umbilical cord. That's a separate cord. thing. Now, when it comes out, then it goes to milk, and then what? But that takes you know? nine months to get to that point. Well, is the mother you, obligated you, uh, to carry the baby that she didn't want for nine months? Well, I'd say if she comes to the point of uh, sitting there, especially you're looking at three months, four months, six months. Eight months. When? When's that? When's a good time to cut it off? Uh, we're get, we can kick well, this back and forth. Uh, my you know, thinking we here is that go, when the baby starts to have perception, is a good time to cut it off and say, "Okay, this is going to experience the end of itself." Well, there's. I've seen where the little bitty tiny babies inside have all kinds of feelings. In uh, well, you've seen motion, small. but is that the same as perception? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Is it? Mm -hmm. So, have you ever moved when you're asleep? Absolutely. So, were you aware of it? No, I'm sometimes. Sometimes I dream while I'm awake. I can uh, do that. And uh, uh, I mean, we're both I smoking have, weed, so I I'm have, not going to criticize have, that well, too much. I have, I have uh, yeah, incredible dream life. It's uh, quite fantastic. And I, I get in and and uh, take my dreams on a trip, knowing I'm there. You know, so uh, let, let me define. Here's from uh, Sock Puppet at. Uh, at that stage, it makes it a life form, a living soul. And this is how, see, people say uh, you've uh, religion. So, Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Uh, religions uh, say there's a body, soul, and spirit. Well, um, I'm, I'm in uh, complete disagreement. I, in studying in, from the uh, original language in, in, through the Bible, that to know that the word hell is used uh, in, from different, different definitions and Basically, it Do you know that hell was invented in the New Testament? Well, it goes back into the Greeks before that. So, well, it, yes, but it, there isn't a biblical pre-New Testament hell. Like there is just not a concept of it. Like there is a place called Sheol, which the is grave. like the underworld for Jews to sleep in. The grave, yeah. The Abraham's yeah. bosom. Yeah, I, I'm aware of all that. But like I said, we we can't uh, get off chasing all that. Let me define the soul. What uh, it's body, soul, and spirit. Well, you you have this life force, and one day it leaves you, and your body goes back into the ground. Um, so this What's life, this force, life leaves, force, this life force that makes us alive. You know, scientists are looking to this day for the God particle to try to give uh, form and, and fashion and name to it. So there. I mean, that, that. sounds really but, a no, lot no. fancier than what the scientists I've heard describe it as. We we're alive, and we're not alive. There's there's no. Um, on the other side that anybody can can come back and say, other than perhaps uh, electrical images, impulses that came out of their brain after uh, near near death. But can you discount a person's uh, uh, experience, whether it be supernatural? You cannot, because you cannot see You can, actually. No, you, you we know can't. what the effect of drugs are. We can just say, hey, we have a basis for these experiences to come out of a mind that is a normal, well-functioning human rational mind. Well, you can have a means, but you cannot have the totality and exception. So you have no idea. Um, wait you a second. Cannot, I can't have the minute. totality and exception of what? You cannot say that, uh, well, I forgot where I'm going with that. But I, what I'm saying is we we're, we're keep running off. Let's stay in one track here. Now, what is the soul? It is the combination. You say, what is the life force? What scientists say that they, you say that they got way more complicated about it. Well, what what it is it? You're alive or you're not. There's a spark in there. You know, if you, you can look at Frankenstein and uh, any number of media into the zombies uh, genre and all these ideas of what life and where it comes from. You can bring it back. And where do you go after you're dead? 
Yeah, yeah. I, I believe that you're dead and you're in the ground, and and that's it. Now there's a what I have in what is a faith, but an unseen hope, and wherein does that lie? Any problem of what I believe, albeit uh, whether it be uh, my beliefs then took action against people that uh, right. We was already talking about that. So, anyways, I think maybe one day I will be raised up uh, to be judged in a future point in the history of this universe. So, does that uh, does that change any anything? Does that mean that I'm forcing anything or uh, claiming you no. to? Uh, do you're do I say you. you have to believe in because you don't believe? Then then you're wrong. Well, look, you, I, I we do all think have. that sounds a bit like a supernatural North Korea. Well, I believe in God. No. no no problem saying that at all. I have. Um, I didn't say there was a problem with that. I just said it sounded like Kim Jong Il. Well, I not really because uh, I didn't. No? I didn't invent the hamburger. First of all, so, you, you're right. God did not invent the hamburger. All right. So what is life? We you agree. go back. You're, uh, <laughs> you're a body, a soul, in the spirit that makes you. So what is a soul? That's a cow. That's a dog. That's a human being. That's a living being. It's the, the well. What is it about the cow soul. that makes it have a soul? It doesn't have a soul. There's, there's a physical thing that we know is in the cow that we know yeah. if we change well, the state of, I we change the state of the cow. I don't think you listen. To, it is not. No, I not, understand. No, no, it does I, not I have, have a, a soul. The soul thing. It does not have a soul. It is a soul. Like in the early 1900s, when a ship went down, they'd say 500 souls lost at sea. That means the life, the the living being, that combination of life. What and body. part of the life is it that gives it the soul? What is it, it that doesn't we give refer a, it doesn't give a, it does not right? it does not give a soul. So you're trying to put me in a box of definitions from some other religion. No, I'm not trying to put you in a box. I'm, I'm just trying to soul, agree on a term. A soul is a living being. That's what a soul is. A living soul is a living being. So does a cow have a soul or not? It doesn't have a soul. It is a soul. It's while it's okay. alive. Until we eat it, then it's meat. Yeah, okay, all but flesh. if we take the leg of the cow and the cow survives other than having its leg gone, then you and we eat the leg, and that's no longer part of the cow's soul. Is the cow still there? It's not, yeah, man, you're not you're not understanding. It no, no, no. Not, I'm saying it does like, not what have a soul. We have there's, left no, if we there's no all of the other parts. If you if you were kept alive with only your head, like uh, from the uh, travels of Marco Polo and uh, was it Turkey where they put him in a a big vat of oil. Let me yeah, I think I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. So, anyways, and pluck their head off as oracles, right? Uh, what? What's the? Uh, oh, I was. I had a word for that. Uh, something about a seer, manic, uh, maniac, maniac. No, manic. Something like that. A, a, a searing maniac. Maniac. I'd have to go look up the word. Anyways, yeah, a prophet. Uh, of prophets or something to that effect. No. So we agree that the brain is probably the basis of experience, right? Yeah, but uh, you're not going to live very long without the uh, other vital. No, it, no, it has infrastructure to keep it alive and move it around and make sure it gets nutrients and stuff like that. Yeah. That's what the body is, right? Yeah. Uh huh. But if we refer to you know 300 souls lost at sea, we are referring to the 300 minds that were lost. The, those are still souls, right? No, it's not the mind neither. The soul is the total experience of the body being alive and whether you have every piece of you cut off and uh, until you expire it still no, sounds like consciousness to me it's the mind that knows consciousness the yeah it's consciousness you have that but you can also be alive without consciousness right well yeah i in mean a, a coma, city can still be a city so, if it doesn't have any people in it that's right yeah so right yeah, and it's one of those, like, I just think of it like that. that's literally the metaphor that I use in my head to think about it. It's like your brain is like a city and the consciousness is like the work day of the people going nine to five and doing all their shit. And, you know, there's different states of consciousness. Mm -hmm. You have, like, the traffic jams where, like, everything's trying to get home and uh, all of And anybody who's seen a city can kind of work out this metaphor for themselves. Like, so, there's the different nutrients moving around and stuff. Let, let me ask you this then. And this is a setup. I'll just warn you up hip front. Go ahead, set me up. Do you do you know all there is to know? Certainly not. I can answer you that question. Oh fuck right no. Now. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you know oh, half? No, certainly not. Let let's let's take it down to a reasonable number. Well, do you know what the definition is according to Socrates of an educated man? 
Well, I'll, I'll let you tell and not ask questions. I just we. <laughs> it's one of the, It's such a great quote. It's not my quote. He, he gets the credit, obviously, right. well, but it's I, it's, it's I, somebody that it. knows All the right. limits of their own knowledge. Okay. Well, I'll well, hold on to that. That's a that's a good one. But bring it back to me in a minute. Let me ask you this. And like I said, it's a setup. So let's take it down to let's say you know one percent of everything there is to know, and that would be an extremely uh, unobtainable. Yeah, number. that would be a lot. Yeah. So let's let's give you credit. Did in you only knowing that minute amount, what uh, what are the possibilities that uh, are in the rest of what you don't know? Apparently, ninety nine percent. Right. So in 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 that ninety nine percent, you cannot say that there is no God. There is no. Creator. Well, you can say of the claims made about specific gods that you can know for sure that based on those claims and the purported evidence for them that those specific gods won't be in the set of gods that you might potentially find. Well, you know, it's the uh, what, what's that little game where they uh, tell the tale and pass it down the line. Um, the game of telephone, yeah. Yeah. So. If you see all a bunch of commonalities and you trace them back, and you could bring all this stuff together um, into as time goes along and passed along in history and religion, and, uh, there's a, a common core that goes back to some point. So one the problem say, is that on, when you start yeah, doing stop, this kind stop, of research, stop a minute, listen. To this, I tell go ahead, you. you're yeah. fine. So this you, is you, a pretty common thread. But yeah, I, you, I'll you, let you, finish back, and you, you can find back into ancestry where. Uh, ideas come from now to say that uh, one is right and the, the other is wrong. Well, when you when you find that there's a thread of truth that uh, winds and binds them together in a sense, then uh, you can you can see a consistency now, idea and people uh, exp speaking uh, uh, as to experience. Now, a lot of people if uh, they said to you, "Yeah, I talked to God," you'd say, "Oh, yeah, you're crazy." But let me come back to that question. I won't necessarily say that. Well, let me come back and ask you this question now. You you say there is no God, and I say that by you saying that, you have declared yourself God and being all knowing. So you well, cannot. That's you just cannot, one of the fuck ups of Christian yeah, mythology. You cannot. I, you're trying to put it on um, religion. Uh, like, I'm not, not, not to say that you're a Christian or any. Like, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but this is a very common theme of, like, okay, you have rejected my God, therefore you are trying to be God, and that's bad. And I get to say you're bad now. No, no, it's no. Just, it's very simple. I'm no. not saying I'm God. I'm just saying that's not. Well, I, I know a lot of uh, the uh, fallacies used in, in the defense of uh, ideology, so. Uh, I mean, I if you find any fallacies outside. that I'm making, please tell me. Well, hold on. Let me catch up over here and chat. So, Grimner, where is that at? All that, uh, and I'm going to copy that too to put in. All that lives, or all that lives, and he said this to, uh, for Don. All that lives, lives forever. Only the shell, the perishable, passes away. And it went out, let me scroll up, um, Hold still, third chat. I'm going to add the that in. The spirit is without end. It jumped out. Eternal, like. deathless, from the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, I'm yeah it's, it. it's a famous quote. It's one that I don't think is factually accurate from the Bhagavad Gita, but that doesn't mean that the Bhagavad Gita is not an awesome book. Yeah, I, I don't uh, personally take this... Uh, well, I, I believe a person's alive as long as there's somebody that uh, holds their, their memory, in a sense, right? And until uh, there's none to remember their name, then they cease to exist unless it's uh, recorded elsewhere for somebody to find and pull up. I mean, that's kind of a common thought. Yeah. I, I, I'm not. It's a nice thought. It would be kind of nice if it was true, mm -hmm. but I don't know what the basis is. Yeah. Well, you, you can't say that a person's religion experience. You. It, if I was to say a Mormon... Actually, we haven't if, talked about what I actually say about people's religious well, experiences okay, yet. Well, it we sounds did, like you're assuming we, that I just no, reject them no, out of hand. We did a little bit earlier. We touched on that in, in saying that... Uh, um, well, I think the religions when, themselves are false, not that the people don't have the experience. Yeah, well, There's a difference. Yeah, it was what I was saying earlier that we touched on is uh, the personal experience of an individual with uh, their uh, actualization with God in a connection, whether it be a supernatural, even uh, were it that God spoke to them. or uh, That's pretty common. Like, do you realize there are religious forms of epilepsy? 
No, I've never heard of that. Yeah, there's something called temporal lobe epilepsy, and that's if you have this kind of epilepsy, you will have the experience of your seizures making you think you're talking to God. Uh, yeah, I think I've heard of that. And also there was a, a brain injury, a guy worked on the railroad, Irish guy. Yeah, back yeah there's, there's, there's a lot of yeah. examples of this. There's yeah. quite a, a large collection of data about this now. Yeah. And actually, it, my mother has some of, like, she has, it's she's had so many diagnoses, but um, she has seizures in reaction to some of the stuff that she has allergies to and she has had some of these kinds of temporal lobe, like she had one they were lucky enough to get on an MRI and they um, basically got her thinking the small Asian woman MRI technician was Jesus that she was talking to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's and one of the recorded examples. MRIs of like there's activity happening in that region of the brain and so like they know it wasn't Jesus she was talking to because that's all on film. Now, definitely a lot of examples of brain damage and uh, severe head trauma that uh, uh, this isn't even that. This isn't an injury. Yeah, well, this there's, there's variations. Yeah, all, all, all different variations there. Uh, Grimner, I'll remember you as long as I'm alive, I'll guarantee you. But, yeah, and you have... My mom, uh, by the way, is you not can, the annoying sort of atheist. She's the really hardcore fundamentalist sort of Christian that is trying to square this with what she interprets as the valid parts of her faith and religious experience. And, yeah, so... Yeah, certainly. This is a difficult conversation and yeah. one that I have to tread lightly on because I still love her. She's still my mother. I disagree about what the factual basis of some of these things are, but I know she has real experiences that I just don't have access to. Right. So and I you, have to actually you, treat that respectfully. Uh, and who's to say that uh, those have not peaked and tuned a, a, a channel and connection and it uh, maybe she really is right seeing that well uh, I, everybody's very sure that the MRI technician is not uh, Jesus well still I, I understand but I'm saying that right there examples different types of uh, brain expression now um, well, the problem to is go, that these well, experiences are pretty universally go ahead yeah uh, yeah but I mean where I was going and where I started way back when is to say that a person now whether they be whatever uh, denomination and I'll Stay into the Christian and say uh, Jehovah Witness or uh, uh, Mormon or Seventh Day Adventist or Baptist, whatever. So they all have a different idea. And who's to say uh, that, that part of that uh, they have that connection? You know, just because they have extra to draw from and understanding and things that were written down by other folks. But when it comes, to, you know, to saying uh, go kill a Go kill a Muslim, you know. Well, there, uh, we have examples exactly. of things in Christian mythology that make it bad for the world. Like yeah. they, saying that AIDS is bad, but condoms are more immoral. Sure. Like that's that's just bad for the world. That's cost hundreds of thousands of lives in Africa in just the last ten or fifteen years alone. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, that right. kind of thing is an yeah. example of Christian mythology being bad yeah. for the world. You can also I think it's important to point these things out. It's not that Christians are bad people. It's they're efforts at being good that make them say shit like this. Well, they get, uh, yeah, they get really into a trap. They're, they're boxed in there, and they have these words that were interpreted to them by somebody else, and so there they are boxed in. In the same hand, you have the uh, people that would say no to abortion and then say uh, no to the uh, migrants coming here from problems created by the, uh, the military and uh, industrial complex of America. Now, if, if we was really seeking the to uh, solve the problem of the, the migrants because, you know, migrants come and go and have been for a very long time. And matter of fact, uh, many with their ancestors from this very land. Uh, but anyway, so they come Can and I go. comment that but, I've never seen a Native American mi bitching about migrants coming in? And they seem to be the only ones with any right to. Well... Uh, I don't know yeah, what I'm type I'm of happy experience. to admit I must have just not seen the ones that have. Yeah. But. I, I don't know what type of experience you have in um, as far as uh, interacting with other ethnicities and, and so forth. I mean, can I say that my kids are half white? Uh huh. Yeah, I have half Thai kids. <laughs> half, half Thai? Yeah. Uh -huh. I lived in Thailand for eight years. I was originally a missionary there short term and um, kind of wound up staying for a couple of years longer term. Cool. And then met their mom and. Uh, that all happened, and we've had a family business for a while, and then it kind of went under, and I kind of came back home. Uh, my uh, my niece's mother is from uh, Guatemala. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely not uh, anti-migration by any means. And 
Yeah. Hey, if, uh, yeah, my kids have dual citizenship, so I, like, I, I take this shit... I've been an illegal immigrant. I take this shit very seriously. Yeah. Well, I, I think if a person goes to a place and they're welcomed there by a person, and it doesn't need to be a government or a state, or especially not somebody standing there in uh, uh, fatigues and, and armed up to... Uh, and setting traps for people that's trying to come here. Uh, there's yeah. some uh, evil people, you know, and then claim uh, the greatness of their God. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, I don't... Yeah, because yeah. you have to have an invisible friend to think that you'll get away with something like that. Well, I mean, you, you pigeonhole Well, you don't have to, that. but it helps. I mean, because, that, like I say, I believe in God, and I'm very uh, logical and scientific about it. I mean, it, there's... Uh, great evidence to me in the existence of God and then not only uh, physical evidence that I see in spiritual personal evidence that uh, I, I felt throughout my life and in, in confirmation um, yeah those are but, real experiences yeah but there's also scientific uh, examples there, there's just can you give me an you, example of one yeah you cannot uh, the second law of thermodynamics will leave you with uh, uh, Heat oh, basically. this one, this is one of my favorite dumb ones that young Earth creationists give about, you know, Earth proves that God exists because of the second law of thermodynamics. No. And it doesn't the, apply. The because universe, thermodynamics, the, the second law, the applies universe, to closed listen, systems, and listen, Earth is an open system. That's, I'm not confining it to the Earth. Now, listen, you got the whole universe. This is what I'm talking about, right? And universe uh, means una, one, and verse is, is word, uh, one word. Which I found, find interesting. So, anyways, were the universe eternal, it would have uh, already reached uh, its heat death. So, I mean, it has to have a beginning. And where do you have what? what uh, well, you got to have it, something it, to we make know the something. The beginning right? was about 13.7 billion years ago, no, no, according we, to the last figure that I saw. We, and don't, that's, um, we don't know. Did, I mean, do you, have you looked into the Big Bang at all? Do you know? Oh, can yeah, you explain yeah. to me where it happened? Yeah, it was. Uh, and and that has changed and evolved over time. It was okay, a, so where it was a ball. Happen? It was a ball, and it got smaller and smaller. And finally, it was the size of a period at the end of a sentence. And then eventually, it was down to absolutely nothing there in the beginning. Well, that was the and increasing it accuracy of the math. Listen, the and then it, it exploded and created everything. Now you cannot create well, the, the shrinking thing is debatable. Stop, stop and the, listen to me. Now listen. Let me go through it. So you can't start with something and uh, come up with something. You have to have an outside source for uh, creation. False. No, I don't know how it no, would be. False. It is particles pop into and out of existence in a vacuum that, in space all the time. So that like you between see one and three percent of the to, buzz on your TV comes to, from that. To your perception, because there's so much outside our range of perception. I mean, ours <laughs> is very minuscule. Even comparing certain senses to other animals, like a dog and vision and hearing and scent and so forth. So, um, yeah, you got running outside the, the bounds here, and, you know, let's kind of walk well, it on along. I mean, this is a pretty good bound. Like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to take it outside the universe and talk about there, stuff that all right. I so might say, be. So tell me how, then, that uh, there could be existence without having had uh, been created. Because particles pop into existence all the time, and they don't seem to care whether we think they do or not. I've got the link in the chat your, right now. All right, your perception. Sometimes vacuum ability. can yield flashes of light. Article title: February twelfth, two thousand thirteen. I got it open. Yeah, that that doesn't mean nothing. Not all that says is uh, those are only perceptions that you're getting. Where where do they travel? Well, they're, they're measurements. What it's is not, it's what not is, a person saying? What, oh, I saw a flash. It's yeah, a it's a measurement. And that what they're doing, them. they're seeing it come enter via whatever conduit it rides through, and then goes on and traverses about its way through. It's a journey through the universe or wherever it is to go. To say that we see it and then we see it gone does not mean that it's a newly created popping up. No, no, no. But they, I, they, I don't they have can to have do the math and figure out where it came from, and they can see it created in space and going out in space and know it was coming into and going out of existence and leaving a very specific radio signature. So you've seen it come in and seen it go out. There's different. Yeah, and steps. it's usually very, very small pieces like hydrogen atoms. Yeah, uh, that doesn't mean it's being created. That just means that it's being no, observed. it's popping into and out of existence no, in that empty space. That's, that's exactly what it means. Its existence comes into our perception because there's a point where you don't know where it, that came from. Comes into this listen, place where these, it had not been. These guys got pictures of faraway planets in vivid detail, and all they've got is pixelation. So. 
there's a lot of extrapolation and well, interpretation. Well, the artist's renderings of what they imagine the faraway planets to look like should not be taken as photographs. Yeah, right. It's the first thing I would say. Because yeah, that's, that's, that's right. a lot of people, like, I made that mistake for a long time until I learned, oh, they just have a couple of pixels of this thing, and they can kind of see it traversing in front of this star, or they can see this star wobbling a certain amount from the planet each, the planet's gravity. Like, that's, that's how they're doing these measurements and finding these things. And everywhere they look, they find them. So it looks like planets are not well, a special thing. They don't, yeah, they don't know the uh, origin of these particles. All they see is coming in. So, what, well, there's no, takes a lot of faith in science. And I'm going to tell you. Uh, well, no, it doesn't take, it, it, yeah, the see, use it of takes, science is the rejection of faith. It's using something that you can test and true, verify. True science, absolutely. And using the data about it instead of saying, I hope this is true and therefore I'm going to treat it as true. Yeah, it's the I, opposite I, of faith. Absolutely. But, but, uh, science, uh, best science says now is that absolutely a uh, tool of uh, propaganda. There's so much disinformation. Oh, yeah, that, that they set, happen. They follow. But that they mean follow the the Listen, let me tell you, when when scientists break off from the accepted mainstream, then they're ostracized, uh, and and it's gone on for, yeah, for many history, many decades this. into the past couple of centuries of you know this uh, great drive to discover um, all the way back you know from from Darwin and. Uh, well, down the man, the fake theory the was understood and... about 50 years before it became conventional mainstream scientific wisdom. What was? Plate tectonic theory. So like the giant plates of stone that are bumping up against each other and along the faults of which are what cause earthquakes and volcanoes and all that stuff. Well, that yeah. was understood. There was, I think it was a particular, I can't remember his name right now, we should look this up. But it was, I think it was a German scientist and I think he died at the North Pole doing yet another test to prove this type of thing. Well, there's uh, also evidence of uh, plate tectonic collapse. So you've got uh, cities out under the under the seas just laid down out there and oh yeah, the, the so, you know there's there's like different the ideas on uh, there's, there's apparently there's different uh, yeah ideas of Pangaea in this uh, plate tectonic uh, plate shift and uh, over many many eons that uh, they came but. Yeah, have the you heard of Goldbeckley Tepe? The, tr the truth is, if you look, uh, some of these would have to have been to fit. You'd have to twist a little bit. But you, you, what you do see is the fossil record, and, and consistent across and around the world, laid down through uh, cross nations and through countries and across the seas and into other uh, uh, continents. Uh, you know, you, you can see the same strata and. Biloxi, uh, in the Biloxi River in, in Texas, as you will over in uh, the White Cliffs of Dover. Uh, what do you find that's consistent is mass, uh, first of all, mass extermination and never nothing new coming into existence. We don't ever have any new animals. We have less and less yeah, and less. Gravids didn't exist around the time there were dinosaurs. So you say. There's evidence of uh, human, human. Giant cats. There is, there's a, lots of evidence. We have humans epochs and, of different kinds of predominant organisms, and quite a lot of these different epochs. No, there were actually you, no, little mammals that were big before dinosaurs. Yeah, you're making this as a fact by the fact that these creatures are found in certain strata. They say this strata is old because it uh, contains old fossils, and we know the fossils are old because they're in old rock. This is circular reasoning, and that is circular this, reasoning. This is, and I, now I, I want to wait a minute. Now listen to me. Me I, I want to give you an example here of sorting. Now you have what's called conglomerates. It's rocks. It's like cement. They're boulders and yeah, it's called pebbles. matrix when they refer to it. So if you look around the bone. if you look at the the Grand Canyon, so they say it took all these years for a river. To climb up the mountain, first of all, to get to the top, to flow down, to well, carve it out. It didn't it climb is, the mountain. Is the first no, thing. No, no, because it was. It's a. Uh, no, because it was flat ground. At listen, the time. if you, it was if you ever, at the riverbed. if you ever see, it was cutting down no, from the, there. Listen, the the river is there as the result of the canyon. The canyon is not there as a result of the the uh, river. Now, let me tell you, the if you've ever seen a dam breach uh, on a pond, for instance, you know, how it rips in the the rapid water, you can see all sorts of examples of cavitation. But I tell you that if it was a big mountain right there. You've got the upper and the lower kebab, uh, kebab that is, and uh, I don't know what, but there was a rupture and a split. And that was a humongous inland lake 
that flowed through there and ripped it out. It ripped a hole through the mountains, and that made the Grand Canyon. It deposited thousands of feet of sediment for uh, many, well, many miles. The first problem with that is those thousands of feet of sediment, one, they would have been loose sediment and not stayed fused together as rock, and two, then, then they would they, not have gone together in layers. You know, they uh, come apart as they were ripped apart out of the mountain and then being laid down under... Uh, Compression. No, no, no. Like they wouldn't disperse over a wide area and oh, have. Yeah. I mean, you, you have. You, you foot, have no idea. Over deep no, of the, you, the you deposit. Have, you may not have any idea of the size of that hole through those mountains of the Grand Canyon. It's not a hole in the ground. It's a. It's a no, rip through a mountain. It's a mile straight down. I no, understand it's not climate. straight down. It's a mile straight up. Right. Yeah, it's it's not. Uh, yeah, it didn't. A mile down. vertical distance of hole. Right. A it's, fucking hole in the ground. Right. We Ten eventually miles. Look at it from space, but yeah. Ten miles across, on an average, a mile deep, and uh, I forget how long. Yeah. Well, here's here's an interesting bit of fact for you. So if you took all the people in the world and stacked them up in uh, like cordwood into the Grand Canyon, do um, you think you'd fill it up? Or no. Just, damn it. There's not that many people. Yeah, you, you wouldn't. I don't believe you could even dam back uh, just the, the initial breach. Am I gone? I mean, not, not with the volume. It maybe if everybody hey, on, can you on hear Earth me? had the American diet, maybe we could fill up half of it. Hold on a minute. I think we got lost here. Let me check the butt. They said, uh, "Oh, it says connecting." All right, so we're off here. Here, reconnecting there. Right. Hold on just a minute. But yeah, that's. It, it's not the oldest geological thing. It's only a couple oh. of a million years old. Like, do you realize that there are no mountains around that were around when dinosaurs were around? Like, not one? Well, that goes a lot further. I'm going to kill this and try to open it back up. Okay. Hold on here. <clears throat> let, me, uh, let me try to pull her back. Okay. <clears throat> You do get connect. Why, uh, why, why did I not? So it's connected. <clears throat> huh. Let me tap in here. I guess I had to go push a pause there. <laughs> Well, we have uh, waited and now come back as the servers are still down. The butt is broken. But we're going to come back and finish this off air and uh, close up. So, uh, just go to, would, uh, where would you like to, to pin the point and bear and leave, <laughs> leave behind? Yeah, it, it, and it's, how do we even continue the thread? Like, what were we talking about when it cut off? I don't know if either of us knows at this yeah. point. Yeah, we're in somewhere uh, between something the about abortion. Uh, yeah, abortion, uh, God, and uh, the existence of uh, whether there be a soul or where life is and where it begins and ends. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I'm the annoying atheist. I don't have a God to say this is good, this is bad. I I just don't have that. That's it's not a set of reasoning that I can rely on, so I have to actually reason through what's the benefit, how does it affect happiness, how does it affect your potential for planning and making your own decisions, how does it affect your health kind of thing, does it take away your life or not? And it's just, to me, even if there's not an objective standard of morality, you can still make objective comparisons without that. So it's just, I try to make those comparisons, it's just, I, I think morality is really a computational problem not not a religious one it's not there's nothing supernatural about it you're just optimizing the experiences of things that have experiences but um on that basis what is abortion it's abbreviating a potential human life and that's kind of the opposite of the point of human life is like we're trying to propagate we want to have more of us and theoretically continue this experiment of whatever it is we are and culture and civilization and all of these fun, awesome things. And uh, in order to make an argument for abortion, it has to have some kind of a clear value. And the value of it is something that's very ugly. It's one of the, you're taking away a life in order to save a different life. Or you're taking away the potential for a life because it's just not convenient for the other life that would play host to it. 
And so it's, it's one of those really difficult conversations to have. But I think it fundamentally depends on a standard for morality where we're considering the moral implications for things that can actually experience those outcomes. And at a certain point, a fetus gets that, but it doesn't start out having that. Um, and there's also the, like, how do we talk about people with, you know, traumatic brain injuries or who are brain dead? Like, it's the same kind of thing. Like, it's, it's the same kind of conversation because I don't think there's anything there to experience and like the the lights are on but the people have left the building sort of deal so even though there's electricity in the building it's not a crime if that building gets demolished and like the next building gets built and it's placed because there's only so much square footage in the city type of thing um and so yeah that's that's not that's not the most pro-abortion argument but it's one that considers the potential of the people that would come out of it, the experience of the people that do come out of it happening, because it's, it's not like the the mom has the abortion and decides she's never going to have kids, because, like, why not just get a hysterectomy, have one operation ever, be done. So it's – this is a difficult conversation. So it, it's one of those things, like, the people without the proper definitions should definitely not – be making up definitions for everybody else and the people without the information should not be deciding for everybody else. And basically I think the legislation, no matter which direction it's in, is harmful because it should be something that a doctor does, not a politician. Yeah. I will say that, um, there, there comes times in, uh, in, for instance, in tubal pregnancies, for, for instance, that, uh, that is not, um, the baby's not, life is not viable. Yeah, it's, it's not it that there's something wrong with the baby, it's that there's something wrong with the pregnancy. Right, where it could not come to full term, and there, there's cases where medically, yes, that there uh, comes that time and choice and decision. Yeah, and, and also, like, the whole contraceptive nature yeah. of it, like, if you're doing contraceptive stuff with abortions, you're basically a loser who's doing contraception badly. Very much it, so. you like one there's condoms two there's pills three there's the morning after pill if you even if you forget those first two things so that you never get to the point where you're vacuuming out a living viable baby right yeah so medically just, yeah medically, too many stops cases. along the way go ahead okay I, i'll go ahead and I'll let you close and and then uh, i'll run out in the end and uh if you want to come back with questions or something then uh, I'll just run out uh, if you if you want to add something right now. I'll, well, I'll just go ahead, add what you want to add, okay. and like if I got anything to add, I'll, I'll say it. But I don't think so. I think that's a decent enough place to stop. Good, good. So, uh, well, as I say, there's uh, a place when life is not viable. Uh, like uh, a a run over dog, there might be a time to uh, put it into that uh, existence of that soul where it uh, no longer exists. It goes back. As all flesh is grass and back into the ground, the idea that uh, creation exists uh, ex nihilo out of nothing, I, I find uh, uh, it doesn't make sense to say that there could be not be a creator where that uh, experience is found as in, in to the individual. I think we all have an inner voice. Sometimes those voices become broken and jumbled into uh, anything from uh, the Inj traumatic brain injuries or uh, drugs, uh, a, any number of things that could uh, cause about malfunction in the brain that uh, would cause misinterpretation. I think there is uh, built in us this uh, conscience, and like I say, um, sometimes it becomes broken in people, whether it be uh, by hardening them heart, their their own heart, or uh, having an occurrence that happen to them. But there's no line to cross. Uh, there's a there's a direction, and uh, it's pivotal. And there's uh, only a central point of what is uh, absolute, determinable is uh, right and good. Sometimes you have to come into question and stop and pause, and perhaps question your own uh, ideologies and notions uh, for sure. So as we tra travel through this life, and we share it with others, it is to uh, uh, well, do as you will, as long as what you do ain't uh, doing wrong to somebody else. This is this idea of free will. We're, we're responsible um, to fix 
our woes. We're in a world that is uh, that uh, is governed in the end by death. So we uh, we have a time that we spend here, and then we go back into the ground or wherever you get stuffed in a hole or burnt up or uh, rot away on the in the lone prairie. It'd be a song to sing about that, about bury me not on the lone prairie, but I'm saying. I think we've heard that one. <laughs> well, that, this is my thoughts and ideas, and that uh, it's very important to have discussion, and especially when uh, people have uh, supposed uh, differing ideas and uh, uh, opposing viewpoints. So this is, uh, I've found good example in, in doing this while I've been doing radio, and, and some people I communicate with that uh, are far to the left of where I stand and far to the right of where I stand on the opposite end as well. Uh, that's that's what I do. I think uh, talking is the only way for sure that we might move forward with peace uh, as the goal and to live together peaceably. That's it. Yeah, because it's one of those, like, I think it's pretty much the same on both the far left and the far right. I think the experience I have with both far ends of the spectrum is that ultimately everybody wants gay married couples to be able to defend their pot plants with guns. Well, whatever two people do. Now, I will put it to this point. Um, and in the law, is as legal, there is a contractual age of 18. So I don't think you ought to be able to engage in uh, any kind of uh, Congress or intercourse with the uh, that uh, would require contract otherwise. Uh, yeah, otherwise. it's one of those, like that's a difficult conversation to have too because one, any rules are going to be bad because there's just not a way for grown-ups yeah. to stop kids from having sex if that's what their intention is. Well, there's there's definitely a blur to that line because like a kid turns 18 and his girlfriend's 17 or 16, you know, that, that imaginary line there. And yeah. to, to go back, you know, in, into history, uh, um, as girls became uh, professor, in, they were, you know, have to be married off. But the times have changed. We live in in a in a modern world where that's, uh, you know, there's there's certain bounds that uh, they do get blurred, like like you're saying there. Uh, there is yeah, and it's one of those weird things where it's the the delta of age of the mother. How do I say this? Like the the success of the child in relation to the age of the mother is favoring older mothers. Let's put it that way, because yeah. it's like your kid is more likely to be born underweight if you're a young teenage mother type thing, and that's like that becomes less and less the case the older the mother gets because the more competent she is, the more financially established and able to see to her own needs and you know get those prenatal vitamins and all of that nutrition and all that stuff taken care of. Yeah. Well, I. The world's set up against us. It's, uh, uh, you know, we don't have food we go get from the grocery store most generally. We're getting feed, which uh, that's what they call a feedlot for cattle. Um, and we're getting... Well, I mean, that's cattle. anthropically part of the condition no matter what, right? Yeah. Like, even if there is a God that made this universe this way on purpose, we're on a floating dust speck in the middle of a giant empty room that we can't get to, mostly. You know, I went to a planetarium, and it, I was amazed that the... Uh, um, the complexity of the system that we we are encompassed in right here, and outside throughout what's been observed or shown to have been observed in the universe, is all in chaos. Things uh, and colliding. And yes and no. It's, there, there's actually like I wanted to come back to this. There's a couple of physics mind fucks that it seems like you haven't had yet. Like the where did the Big Bang happen thing? That's kind of a trick question because yeah. the answer is everywhere. If you're in the universe, that universe is the universe that had a Big Bang. And so, by definition, you are looking outward in, you know, three dimensions at the expansion of space from where you are. So, it's, it's you can think of it as spherical from where you stand, but it's not quite as simple as you, that. You would be somewhere <laughs> in the uh, periphery, in the end, wherever. Yeah, and so, so, like, the metaphor that I use is if you consider it like a room, and, like, it, the room is stuffed full of all of the stuff that there is. And you just think of it like it was a smaller room, it's got the same amount of stuff in it, and now it's a bigger room. And the stuff is pushing itself away, you know, from the center outwards as the room expands outwards and becomes a bigger room, you know, floor further away from the ceiling, walls further apart type thing. Uh, you know, 
and there's such a huge uh, expanse of a described explosion such as that. It still needs a, a source. Um, well, so, no, no, no. That, that's the other thing is, like, this is too. just momentum because we're seeing everything accelerate away. The further away something is from us, the faster away it is starting to move. Well, you've got the red light. Uh, uh, red, yeah, the red, red light phase shift. Yeah, so do you understand dollar. that? Yes, and the blue and the red and the direction and speed, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, it, I mean, it's the same as, like, the train swarm type thing, and that's that's not totally mysterious to you if I say it. Like, should, should we spell this out so that, like, is this going to be in the podcast that people are listening to? Yeah, no, we we can leave it at that because that would be going much deeper into uh, stuff that I haven't looked at in so long that I wouldn't have much uh, topic to draw on. Yeah, but I, that's, I understand like, the basic the idea and what what it uh, what it describes and uh, well, the, the, the light. I don't know because it's one of those. I don't want to be the asshole of saying you're an idiot for believing in God, and that's not the message, and that's not what I'm saying when I'm trying to make the next point. But saying that it's intuitive to us to feel like there's a God does not mean that there's a God. Because it's, in, it's, intuitive, it's intuitive to us to feel like the earth is flat and ground is a flat plane that we walk around on, and it's like rectangles, and we're standing up from it, and it's, it's always like that. So that's an intuitive thing. And so it's possible for people, even to, there is today a flat earth conspiracy group thing that thinks the round earth is a big pile of bullshit. And um, yeah, that, that's a thing that exists because it's possible for us to think a thing and feel a thing that is not necessarily in relation to reality around us. It's just a close enough approximation that it's useful to us at the scale at which we live. Yeah, I looked rather closely at that flat earth and uh, went through all that people had to say. I, I say that the uh, that we're on a globe that, uh, you know, in in the science fiction uh, apocalyptic uh, book that's uh, being written in my head, <laughs> they'll probably never go to uh, uh, paper, but <laughs> the world is flat. But there's also all kinds of other, uh, these ideas and notions, I want to compile them and throw them all in there with, just a little bit of everything. It's a zombie apocalypse, so that's I like that genre. Um, but here we are in this old world, and uh, I bring. Uh, I really got to wonder now. NASA scientists will tell you that they have forgotten how to go to the moon, and they don't know how they got through that van. Ba uh, uh, the, uh, the radiation belt was it the van? What is it? The radiation belt, van meter. I know what you're talking about. Uh, what's, what's it called? Van Meter, I'm thinking of Donna's name. The Van... De <laughs> I get tongue-tied and stuck in a word that won't come out. Anyways, it's that Van... I almost said it, too. Van Halen, I was going to say. <laughs> Van Allen, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, anyway, so I wonder how... Did they... Was it a fake? Did they go to the moon? Did they fake it? Did oh, they went out around the North Pole. Huh? Oh, and yeah, I'm not not talking about the launch trajectory. I'm talking about... How did they get out of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, because they say now, well, we don't know how to get through this uh, radiation belt. No, you don't. If, yeah, that's, that's one of those. You've got to go through it. There's no going around it. It's out there as far as I know. Well, it, it's out there, but there are thinner sections of it, and those are closer to the poles. And so from North America, from the North American no, continent, I'm, you I'm just not, do yeah, further not, north, closer to Greenland and Canada, no, and you go out through it there where it's the shortest path out, right. and then you come back down to a flat trajectory around Earth, or like around the, the yeah, pole not, of Earth and the moon together. Yeah, I'm so not talking around talking, the north end of the moon. Yeah, I'm not talking about escape velocity and uh, getting out of uh, Earth's pool in the simplest path, but... Uh, out out there in space, way out yonder between here and the moon, is a Van Allen. Is that it? Van Allen. Right no, you, you're. I'm I'm looking at a diagram of it right now, and like there's a here. I, let's pull up the Neil deGrasse Tyson explanation because he's talked about this. Neil deGrasse. Yeah, that's Van Allen. That's why I can say second. Went around the Van Allen. Because let's see what comes up. Neil deGrasse Tyson, we went to the moon and discovered the Earth. That's that's a very democratic title. <laughs> well, all I'm telling you is, is the NASA, and I've heard it said right out of the mouth there with the whole 
NASA thing across the bottom and all that, that uh, they just don't know how to get back to the moon and get through this here. Well, it's not that they don't know how. It's that the expenses of going are not overcome. And, like, there's just not something new to do there. There's not, like, really wants a moon base unless they're afraid China's going to get one first type of thing. So well, it's, it's really hard to get that kind of a thing there. funded. And there's nothing really new that they can show that would be valuable to discover from the moon. Because they, they according to NASA, the moon is basically made of the same stuff as Earth. I think I, I remember something about they say they thought it was a chunk knocked out or something one time. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's, they know there was another uh, solar body that collided with the Earth, and that collision threw a, a huge chunk of the Earth's crust into orbit, and so Earth had a ring for a little while, and that coalesced into the moon. Yeah, that, we've heard all of that. But anyways, yeah. that that was just touching on something. I, yeah, I think, in my opinion, that that first, uh, at least the uh, first... 1969 July uh, was it 20th or I believe it was yeah that they landed on the moon I I think there's a good chance they could have faked that because they had this <coughs> space race oh, yeah. to win so I mean it's not it's not crazy to say I mean were they, you born then yeah I was alive I seen them landing on the moon I was watching it as a little boy on black and okay. white TV so do you remember that the Mir spacecraft the first satellite in orbit do you remember what that was no, don't call specifics here. I know that... Uh, okay, that that's kind of one of those important details. It was the one spacecraft of the, was... One of the things... A, no, I'm just talking about ICM. when when, uh, when they stepped out on the moon, one giant... You know, that was... Uh, everybody, uh, I think, that was of age of, uh, you know, knowing, probably remember it, like 9-11 when, the, when that happened, you know? Yeah. Some things stay in your mind. And then other things you uh, you think you recall and you've seen them before the days of it and all that, but whatever. That's all. Yeah, human memory is kind of shitty. Yeah, it, it really, really, really is. You know, witnesses and are also why witness testimony is the re least reliable in the court of law. Absolutely, it is. Yeah. Anyways, hey, let's uh, let's uh, tune this out. I'll let you finish up a little bit here. Anything you have to say, and then I'm gonna go out and uh, run out to my radio log over here and. Shut her down. No, I think we're good. Dude. Let's let's continue this conversation next time and do it all there. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll get together and talk about some other stuff where we want to uh, bear focus to. Yeah, fuck yeah. All right, and I'll uh, I'll have uh, it'll be a while. I have to get with Grim and get over here and uh, compress and tag everything, and then I'll, I'll give you the link here where you can pick up the uh, the audio here and see what I put into the radio log. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Thanks, buddy. Of course. Appreciate it. All right, and I think we're hanging up now, and you go keep kicking ass, okay? All right, thanks, buddy. Cheers. Cheers, yo. All right. Well, I'm going to be moving just a little bit of stuff around here, but I want to run right back through this here. I've got some links down here. i got to bring a couple of it back again. And down at the bottom, a little fun I'm having with some uh, nesting clowns I've come to call uh, these uh, scattermoosh. Who is this poor boy Scaramouche, and does he do the Fantango? Well, I say, this is me speaking super secret identity. Shh. Tis true I come to discover secrets, but more to trust than suspect. Fitly nothing but words gratify me, and that's what I say and what I do here. And try to pull them out and put them in place. Today is uh, thus far titled Life and Death, Blurred and Bloody in Black and White. On Real Liberty Media, this is, uh, we uh, well, went off air for a while, and then the server ain't back up, so I'm going to tune this out uh, and for the recording, so nobody's listening right now but me. Huh? What did you say? <laughs> uh, in the What Matters Ponder Gander Radio Writing Series, I have blurred lines, maximum level of compose, and it's laid down and low. Well, it's like a how high can you stack it? What can you put up on there? Well, I'll tell you this: what uh, uh, Steve did a, a cover a lungs uh, Van Zant uh, cover. We'll tell the world we tried. Well, that's the least we can do. And I'm going to run back through here what I did that's broken up in the past uh, through this broadcast and put it all together. 
When I find here things exist uh, either because they have recently come into existence or because they have uh, qualities that make them unlikely to be destroyed in the past. Richard Dawkins. In, uh, from the 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet, he says it's, uh, it r it's really the real picture we need to see in front of us. Just because five minutes after your birth, they decide your name, nationality, religion, and sect, and you spend the rest of your life defending something you didn't even choose. Doesn't make you a religious ju a religion judge. No one can solve the issue, and certainly not prayers. We need to solve the problem. The problems, as the Dalai Lama states, we are asking God to solve it, and it is illogical. God would say, "Solve it yourself," because you created it in the first place. Well, that's uh, kind of where I, I stand. There's uh, there's also faith and in, in hope in uh, ideas that uh, pleading and prayers will uh, will bring mercy or bring. Uh, Things needed. I believe that I've seen it happen. I, that's my perception. I won't tell anybody else they got to believe what I believe. Well, I'm going to go here to Hal Anthony. Apparently, principle and responsibility are not popular where breads and circuses are made, where they're made readily available as well. That is, and to create the social, the societal equivalents of a lady. Uh, I can say it right. Labyrinth junk lady. Yes. What you going to do with all that junk in your trunk? Huh? Well, responsibilities, busyness. Rouse the bees buzz. The toil and gain of life's daily bread. And circuses rouse crowds to glee. The pain drawn frown. The responsibility to suffer as the sad clown of a face is just and only ordinary and everyday business is principle. Well, it seems to be sometimes it's exampled rather well like that. Huh? So what is this uh, breads and circuses? The breads is the need. That's controlled? Yeah, well, there's big famous people that said, you know, control the food and you control the population. Well, what's the creed? What do we find that, that strives people and desire disdain in wanting and frivolous to just in time use it up and throw it away? Bic lighter society, I call it. Want and ruin is made to create societal acceptance. Amaze, amazement, a ruse. Amuse, amusement. A, r a ruse as well, and an arousement, a reaction. Then this is a problem, action, solution. Try it all the time. They get you the right stimuli, and you jump like a, a frog on a hot plate. Well, popular apparent principle and responsibility available equivalents. That's what to look at there. In comparison. And look for what is obviously right and obviously wrong to start with. That's the best way of starting to sort it out, I say. The Ponder Gander way. It's, uh, it's a wander in a wanderland. Well, take me by the hand and lead me to the land that you understand, ocean man. Lost lingo. What matters worldwide? This is a yellow site. This picture here, lost lingo and words. <coughs> Emojis have become a favorite rhetorical weapon of choice, claimed by some as a sign of how the culture has degraded. Say what you will about not being a proper language. Ah, I like it, and I think it has become proper, uh, as the tune has been told. By words or weird faces, in type or strange places. Best language has, lo has language lost its luster. What do we know? Or think we know what's being said, and how can we say it? We might be saying the same words, but do we speak the same language? It's a truism that uh, we live in an age of sound bites and quick quips. Even better, anything that fits into 140 characters or less. I believe that's what Twitter has 140. <laughs> 
<coughs> excuse me, and, and let's see, anyone, <coughs> anyone can do it. I'm going to have to blow this up. Wait, it's not a bomb. Hold on, hold on. Did I go too big? I think I'm doing. Whoa, it's huge, huge, huge. It's great, really great. I love it. Excellent. Really good, really good. Oh, back to here. <laughs> uh, anyone can do it in our contemporary uh, simplified society and redu uh, redundantly so. That's what it says. Does it make communication easier than ever? For most, yeah. It's uh, it's uh, the simply, it's simply the way we live. Communication. Decontextualized and fragmented. And I, it blurs. Let's see the, the fuel experience. I'm going to skip that because it's too small. Ideas. Your eyes are probably better than mine. Find it over here at the uh, our log. If you're listening elsewhere, bet you the speaker, YouTube, reallibertymedia.com forward slash author forward slash vine for Vinny, me. Ideas provided for us from birth in a nature of trust and confidence have compartmentalized into fiduciaries and fraud. We have the responsibility to no longer be predefined, redefined, and classified by names or notions. Being owned by misdirection or mere miscomprehension, confined in separation by a lost lingo. As we know, there are some knowns. There are some things we don't know. We know. We also know that there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. Rumsfeld's answer was not just an evasion or misrepresentation. It was a non-answer. Many people believe the reply to be brilliant. <laughs> I tend to think otherwise. Are we not men? They tell us we have lost our tails, evolving up from little snails. Jack Homo from Devo. Miss person here says out of ancient Egyptian literature it was if law is laid waste and order destroyed no poor man can survive when he is robbed justice does not address him that's right peace is settled in law settlement that's what law is to bring and that is to correct any harm ticks and top Bits and fits of life's little knocks come big, timely hits. Born in time, you better hurry, thinking of gifts, not giving away. Looking good together, don't close your eyes. Time is short, corked in a bottle. The good and bad, timely in manner. Life is unafraid, escape alarm and confusion. Minute by minute, you're almost there. Give a sweet... In a timeless manner, awakened in time to look in the mirror, concerned in measures, watching its cries, going for broke in the inheritance, gambled, lost choices, and they cost more than dollars. This is in a language in a time, I suppose it to say, mean slash time of grimmage. Greenville, <laughs> I can't say it because I've stuck my tongue. But meantime of Greeny, just where it is and how it's said, it's sound toned, is what it is. It's sound toned time zone laid down low. I hear to put here to listen from Steve. I know that his songs. I've played a few of his songs pre-broadcast tuning up. This here is from a broken home to an unmarked grave. Steve Talbot. Now, Chiscurrier was along here and uh, we kind of
kicked back and forth some ideas and walked through them. And, well, we got through some stuff and come out uh, uh, on the same <laughs> position, no doubt, than where we come in at. But that of, uh, from a broken home on down into where, what other stems the society, failed society, and what, it, well, it would go back and find the cause, first of all. But we see the abortion, and we spoke on uh, abortion in the, uh, well, the uh, partial birth in, in uh, trying to define as uh, when a life is viable and, uh, you know, when, when indeed some some people aren't really independent and able to take care of themselves ever, if, uh, whether it be a mental or physical uh, deficiency or accident uh, that have brought them to that. But I say that uh, life inside is uh, life. And uh, once it started growing, it's live. It's what what will it become? What is it has that chance to go back up in there to what's his name, uh, Dawkins or Richard up there? And what did he say? And up here at the top, I started out right there below where I started piling all this uh, maximum level of compose. He said things exist either because they have recently come into existence or because they have qualities that make them unlikely to be destroyed in the past. So we have a continuation of. Uh, and proliferation of the human flesh is man going along then we come to points where uh, the removal of life is there sometimes a life unviable that uh, needs to be removed uh, vacated to uh, in saving the life of the, uh, the host the mother well down through here I'm going to break these down where they're not so big but uh, there's a uh, there's one here. Liberals excited to sign a petition protecting uh, unborn eagles. Then asked about unborn humans. Babies are gross. It's uh, from Freedom Outpost and their WordPress. I uh, have... Uh, this is some stuff I pulled here. And it was on uh, some previous conversation with Chascura. And, uh, because his presentation, they're presenting that... Uh, well, where does the combination lie? Well, obviously the sperm to the egg, but here in the Bible, uh, it was there's topics on spilling your seed on the ground. Well, that was uh, in masturbation, not uh, uh, con contraception admonished. As I go on along, I pulled some more lines out. It's evident, and I'm going to move this up to the top, and I think I already did. It's evident, it's right in front of me in black and white. In red, and this is uh, bloodied, just bruised, uh, blurred, and bloody in this discussion. Because uh, mostly you're going to probably start with the opinion you started with and come out on the other end the same. But uh, in uh, interest of discussion and sharing that information, uh, invited uh, just good. He's uh, with recently come to over to the Real Liberty Media chat, a member of a few other folks in New Radio last night, matter of fact, Poopster and Prince, Power Hour. And I had some contention with some of the things they said last night, but yeah, hey, everybody should uh, speak and speak boldly, speak loudly. Loudly. I get down here to the bottom where I have uh, I'm building these nesting clowns like uh, the Russian nesting dolls. But these are things I'm making out of lines and figures and symbols and whatnot. Stacking them up. It's a, it's a headliner. It's nesting clowns with a crown. <laughs> a cap on your head. Yeah, well, it's just true life. Come to discover secrets. It, yes, more to trust than suspect. Fitly, nothing wor but words gratify me. This is me, my super secret identity of a Capitani Zani. Now, let's see, let's see. I believe that leaves me wrapped up. I'll run to the bottom. And you'll know that uh, Port Portmanteau Escatamouche is where the, the secret abode is of Escatamouche. And did I say abode wrong? <laughs> now, what matters to ponder again? A radio writing series with me, Vinny, Vincent Easley. To think and reason, raising expectations through thought-provoking episodes. Standing in the gap. Connecting voices. I did it today. It's been a while. Considering perspectives, I certainly do that. And uh, I allow those perspectives 
to air with me. That's broadcasting what matters worldwide. And here I be. Radio writing, it does. Let's see, try it again. Radio writing sounds great. Less filling. <laughs> LibertyMedia.com. Author Vine. Slash author. Slash Vine. To Pondaganda. I'll tell you, hey, tell YouTube to get bit. Matter of fact, if you're with me this long, do me a favor. If you got this on YouTube, give me a thumbs down right there. Then go down and give me something to comment. Now, if you don't go that far, give me the thumbs down, and at least that'll give me imitate, uh, indication. Then come to uh, either go over to BitChute, first of all. Tell YouTube to get Bit and get to BitChute, my friend. Yeah, I mean, YouTube has its use, but uh, for um, they, they're just full of uh, sensory. Cens sensory perception, no. No, they want to uh, squash that. Well, you know, there's no need to censor people out of irresponsible to wade through that to figure out if the world is round or flat. That's right. Get to uh, bitshoot.com, Real Liberty Media. This little park over there. I've got one over there, too, called What Matters Worldwide. And you can also find uh, one in search of YouTube, Real Liberty Media. And yes, please, please uh, do give a, a thumbs up or su subscribe. But not on this one. Yeah, subscribe if you're not subscribed, but Give me a thumbs down. This is uh, this is uh, September the 20th, and life and death, blurred and bloody in black and white. On down through here, I'm going all the way to the bottom. Bit shoot, yep. Freedoms Network, uh, it's a website and uh, you know, a social media place, and on Twitter, Real Liberty also, and RealLibertyMedia.com. Yeah, find Twitter, all kinds of places. There's a lot of links here. Probably need to add more. Well, I'm not going to say all that's below here. I'll only say that uh, uh, in the USA versus Bundy at all, who I am, and where I was out there is, uh, at the standoff in 2014 and uh, witness at the federal tri trial in 2017 and dismissed with prejudice in 2018, first of the year there. It was, just, it was uh, uh, mistrial declared. December the 20th of 20, uh, 2017. But I'm going to be starting back in uh, because we're coming up to when the uh, third uh, round of trials, which was the first here, Clive and Dundee and uh, two of his sons, Ammon and Ryan, and then Ryan Payne, uh, were there on trial. And that's where he ended. And then the, the next guy is the, uh, the third tier, which is supposed to have been the uh, least... Uh, Guys that they charged stuff with. Oh man, how that works! Superseding indictment stacked. It's all rigged. I tell you, I was there at that trial, and I went up to uh, Denver for Bruce Doucette's trial, and I just seen the atrocity, and I've talked about it. And so that's that's where I'm headed back in. This is the end of the in black and white run series here. So I've kicked that about. I'm, um, I did some extras that are over on the Ponder Gander podcast player. You can find that link and just click it and uh, be here over on the radio log. And that is hashtag capital R L O G. That's for Real Liberty. And it's also for Real Liberty Radio. And it's also for Real Liberty Radio Writing. And it's a log. So there it is. Uh, the, the blog log. Blog blog. And anyway, there it is. Uh, there's more information on to the Bundy. Uh, what's called uh, the the Battle of Bunkerville? It was called, and among other things, called the peaceful pushback, uh, occupational protest. Man, I got this thing blowed up so huge. Well, let me say to come on uh, where you need to be over here Sunday is behind the woodshed. Hal Anthony uh, bringing sense, it's bringing the notice out of the news, and, and as a a pathfinder where we see. The, uh, the the path and the trodden path, that is, of uh, this occupation upon us and where uh, it's gone wrong. And what, uh, not how to go win in court, as so many people misunderstand about this whole concept of uh, opening a can of whoop ass. Well, the, the best, best way to not get whooped is to not get fought. Well, to stay out of the reach, right? So as a pathfinder, we find uh, how. Walking us through life and demonstrating the occupation and how uh, 
they are they're moving them out out, out moves through and in uh, well from news and into the uh, the what's called the uh, law and in, in legal and how uh, that has been perverted. So seeing that to, to understand and uh, I tell you I, I went around the country. I did a lot of things a lot different. Some of these people that do the your uh, uh, First Amendment audit. Well, I I had a nice little uh, laminated piece of paper that uh, give uh, identification of myself and who I was and what I was doing, and I I found that really worked rather well. Uh, non anonymous I am that uh, others I support 100%. They're they're right to anonymity and to do as they're doing in the First Amendment audit. And um, as I said earlier in this broadcast, it's very important to that we be able to test, to call uh, in redress, in grievance, to uh, peaceably decline having ourselves uh, is subjected to uh, confiscation and theft and um, all that that comes, uh, kidnapping and held for ransom, what not. Un, um, crimes they call the uh, without victim. And where it uh, law is turned uh, taken by legal and used as manipulation to steal uh, resources, and it's a big range war out there in the West going on. And I'll say, you know, some of the players on the other side is big money. I I don't uh, say that uh, they're gonna if they were to get a hold of all this uh, federally federally uh, held land that they would uh, be right and just about it and not taking uh, crap all over the place. And tear things up. I, I certainly believe in preservation and conservation, but to say that uh, I, I forget what the how many acres, thousands of acres, was the uh, Gold Butte out where uh, Clyde and Bundy runs cattle in the, the Virgin River Valley, uh, and up into the mountains on the mesas and all through. And I, I I'm going to tell you, I, I know about cattle, and I'm going to tell you they ain't hurt nothing. They ain't killed the turtle one. I'm telling you. Yes, it's a tortoise two-step. It's a cattle rattle. No moo in 92 and ca- uh, cattle free in 93. These were the slogans. They they come out slowly out of the uh, Endangered Species Act and then back the, in further from that step-by-step incremental control and a failure to uh, maintain this uh, the, the uh, transference of lands into the uh, states where... Uh, I mean, hopefully, well, you know, the government's full of cronies, so as soon as it, uh, it's going somewhere and being taken some, by somebody uh, inside or out. Uh, so either either way, it really is not look like a very winnable thing. So Hal Anthony right here, Real Liberty Media, noon o'clock on the Pacific, it's uh, 3 p.m. Eastern at 12 o'clock. Easter. Now, Grimner comes along. Get here 15 minutes earlier. You can hear that uh, gravelly voice. Yeah, he's got a real cool voice. I like to listen to. You yeah, know, about 15 minutes till noon East time, uh, East Coast time, and he's tuning up for some blues. And then trivia comes along. Fast fingers. Dee 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 dee. You got fast fingers and a sharp mind. You like to play trivia. Well, you gotta have a good fast internet connection that helps too sometimes because there's a lot of smart people playing. Anyways, come on over and visit tonight, the Freakers Ball. It'll be at uh, 11 Eastern. And Moose Girl will be along, I reckon, with uh, Grim Near, far and wide. See why I can't say Greenwich Mean Time? <laughs> For <laughs> I only said that accidentally. I bet I couldn't do it again. <laughs> I'll be saying Greenwich Minutes Time. <laughs> Yeah, well, Grip speaking of Grim Near, he's back on Mondays at 7 Eastern with leftovers. Muse news, roosed and roused and kicked about. Might be old, might have some mold on it. Might stink and make you sick. But I'm going to tell you, reckon you ought to come have some. Come on over with Grim Near. He's the mighty man about this channel that's built it up, this network. And, uh, Given such a fine sight to see. I appreciate Grimner. Sure do. Um, Grammy, Mary, and, and Flash have uh, stepped away from the mic. Time pending. 
So we'll uh, we'll be back Thursday with uh, Poopster and Prince. These guys talk about uh, cryptocurrencies and coins and whatnots. And had a guest on last night that uh, <laughs> he he thought it what a person ought not not have available to them and designs of uh, weaponry or arms. You know, but I think they was corrected a little bit and maybe felt some bit of shame. Well, I rolled it around and right back to the top and coming back down again. That that ends at blurred lines. Maximum level of compose. It's all piled up right here at the radio log. And uh, laid down in low. And all I can say is, uh, well, I'll tell the world that I tried. The words from the lungs that come out. There's uh, links and all that stuff. If you're just listening over on one of them uh, places, YouTube, whatnot, come on to the uh, radio log right here. A Ponder Gander podcast, all the links here, and all this stuff. Make it so fun. I try to make it look nice to see. And I wish I had more ability and tools there here. Maybe they exist. I'd like to make it like not just words, but uh, shape the words into the world I want to see, to tell about anyways. All right. Let me go push a button. I reckon I'm done. Thanks, folks. We'll see you down the line.